at that time, you and Corey Smith, you guys came in with such a belief mm -hmm. from the outside. Because I consider Exhibit to be very much so on the inside. He was a mm -hmm. part of the group. Mm -hmm. He has it tatted on his hand. Yeah. Very, very much so. He is strong, I'm steady. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you guys, and, and you in particular early on, I think you saw it and saw the vision early. And, and you you supported it and and lended your voice to it and 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 more than your voice your stage to it and then that relationship developed into Corey mm -hmm. having the equal amount of infinity for it and and he put his name and and you guys together put y'all's name at the time when when you were at at peak time in your career and, mm -hmm. and 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 doing like you know incredible things you know separate and apart from black star separate and apart from Re reflection eternal mm -hmm. you were doing incredible things and, and still are don't get me wrong still are but at that time you opened up your float on the parade of hip hop to us and welcomed us on and i just got to let you know brother that i am a Eternally grateful for that. Oh man. And 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 what you were what you were able to do reminds me of, of a lot of biblical stories that I read and study now because you took what some might say and see as what you had, which you know what I mean, was was was, you know, really in these days and times enough for maybe just one. Mm -hmm. You know? And you spread it amongst so many. And we were a part of that so many. And there was times in my life at that time that I have to admittedly say that I wasn't clear hmm. on how you were being used by God at that time in my life, mm -hmm. in our life, in my group's life. And, and, and I did not have the complete self-awareness and the patience to value it the way that I should have. And I, I want you to know that I recognize that. And I forever, brother, love you for the belief, love you for the commitment, love you for the follow through. And I love you for ultimately putting up with my bullshit. <laughs> you're gonna make you gonna make me cry. Here's right? your class, I live. <laughs> the, through, through the whole time, because because there was times when I admittedly was on some bullshit. Mm. And, 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 that, and that comes with hindsight. See, had I had the foresight and the insight, mm. I would have never made it to the hindsight. Mm. Man, well, let me just add on since we're building. Yes, sir. That was a very difficult time for me. Yeah. For a lot of reasons. Yeah. Because as much as I've received that, and thank you, and I honor you for, for saying that mm. to me, mm. I felt like... I didn't deliver what I could have delivered. Right. Because I didn't understand the game. I understand it a lot more now. But there was a lot of resistance against me personally for what I what my vision was at the time. Yeah. We went into the blacksmith situation. You know, me and Corey had a very public falling out. Yeah, yeah. Around shortly after that time. I know, yeah. And part of it was because I didn't understand who Corey was. I didn't understand who I was. I didn't understand who yeah. Corey was. We were all growing and learning. We were all growing and learning. And um, we were all really young, by the way. Yeah. Real young. Yeah. And so what happened, what was happening was blacksmith music, that was my thing. Yeah. That wasn't Corey's thing. Right. Corey's thing was blacksmith, blacksmith management. Management, yeah. And he was a great manager. He was my manager for 20 years. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't have did it without him. Right. Um, but I was challenging him, him in ways that he wasn't ready for. Yeah. With blacksmith music yeah. and him trying to support my vision, he just didn't know how to support it. He yeah. knew how to be a manager. Yeah. And so I'm operating, trying to operate as lab label exec. Yeah. He's operating as manager and we clash heads. And the label, Tom Wally and Warner Brothers, yeah. they weren't respecting who I was because Corey didn't put me in a position yeah. to be respected. So I remember, well, first talking about exhibit, exhibit, I met Le exhibit. At Blue Davis crib from Lyricist Lounge. Yeah, yeah. When Lyricist Lounge first on, got man. started. Come on, man. He would come out to New York and stay with Blue and Anthony yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and um Danny Castro and them. Come on, man. 
From the boys right and there. And Exhibit would always call me when he got to New York. Yeah. I remember Exhibit came to New York to do the tunnel with Snoop and, and Dre when Bitch Please was out. And he called me. Mm -hmm. And I was on stage at the tunnel. Mm -hmm. That's one of my greatest memories. Right. So whenever I would call Exhibit, he'd, be, he'd pull up to the airport with a truck full of guns. Yeah. And be like, what you need? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what we, what we, what, what we going to, like, he was very, very passionate dude. Very passionate. What we done started, look at what we done started, this the people party, when opportunity knock it, then young nigga move that dough, whoa, get your foot stuck in it, call me young, go get it, now you can't fuck with it, my slow, go with it.